YouTube. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on YouTube. All right, today we're heading back to Sam Onella's awesome channel with a little video he did, and this caught my eye. I think it'd be interesting, which is my theory about Neanderthals. I like that he says it's his theory, and knowing his kind of comedic, his but historic mind that this could be interesting so obviously i've never seen it um but interested to see kind of what they got here with this neanderthals are uh, an interesting thing to study because they're a uh um a group that seem to have coincided with early humans um but didn't survive out they they uh they to um to homo sapiens they they um basically lost out and are extinct now Although um, there's all kinds of ancestry and DNA things you can tie with that are interesting to look at. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if he's going to focus on like why they're gone or something like that or who they were. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, all right. If you liked the original video, you know the drill. Go down into the description and click on the link to the original video. So it gets a view, a like, sub, all that stuff over to Sam. And if you like what we're doing here, um, we'd love to have you as a sub too. So hit that sub button and enable notifications so you can come hang out with us at our live streams and uh, live premieres and join our Discord server to be part of our community as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. You say I always love the orchestral like starting music. This is gonna be very high class. <laughs> Hey kids, remember Neanderthals? Me neither, cause they're dead. Some say they went extinct because of out competition by Homo sapiens, but personally, that's us, go us. <laughs> I don't subscribe to that notion. I believe that they went extinct primarily because they interbred with early humans, not because they were inferior survivors. Now, now this is something that has been very popular, uh, that you can trace D uh, a lot of people's DNA to this, um, and find those uh, connections there. So. There was absolutely inter mingling. Now, I could ramble on for a couple of hours about the genetic and archaeological evidence for this, but modern experts have already run those points into the ground. Now, instead, I want to bring something totally new to the table that I thought of myself. I call it the sexy Neanderthal theory. <laughs> okay, hear me out. From a modern day point of view, this all sounds ridiculous, right? If someone came up to you asking if you wanted to reproduce with a Neanderthal, you'd say no. That's disgusting. Who are you? This is a mall. Where is security? But that's just what society has taught you to believe. It doesn't really reflect the true animal within you. Don't okay, so prediction. The Neander Neanderthals were attractive to humans, so rather than repulse, be repulsed and, and separate themselves, they actually uh, blended in so completely that they, we, I guess as Homo sapiens, are a blend of them. But I know the uh, Neanderthal DNA is a lot smaller, right? It's not, you know, as, as big. And I, I'm not a biologist at all. Maybe we need a biology teacher to react to this, but that's just what I had heard of in the historical context don't believe me take a look at this sculpture gross right well guess what cavemen used to whack off to that they thought it was great so we're gonna have to put a whale the the larger uh figurines are called uh venus figurines they're some of the old they're actually some of the oldest artifacts we have of early civilizations um usually those are represented as fertility goddesses and uh, the, uh so they're large and seemingly more fertile that way um that was kind of the the impression of the the larger humanoid figures all of our deeply rooted cultural ideations for a second and instead look at things from a purely biological perspective first i gotta learn y'all a thing or two about sexual selection there are two main types of sexual selection there's intrasexual selection where members of the same sex compete for dominance and intersexual selection where members of one sex are intentionally choosy about who they mate with now most of these are done by most animals to some degree but with humans and most other mammals there's a bit of an asymmetry in how either sex performs its selection. Namely, males tend to focus more on intrasexual selection, while females prioritize intersexual selection. This isn't just me stereotyping, I swear. There's actually an evolutionary reason for this. See, whereas males barely invest anything at all into mating in the absence of monogamous culture, childbearing is a huge deal to females, using up a lot of resources, so it only makes sense that males- Many months of having a large parasite-like growth in abdomen. <laughs> Pregnancy. <laughs> Maternity shirts. 
dudes would want to be more promiscuous and females more selective. So to recap, The Bachelorette, that's an accurate portrayal of our most basic instincts. On the other hand, if The Bachelor were to be done with a bunch of cavemen, there wouldn't be this season-long show. Just a five-hour special where The Bachelor bangs every contestant at once, which, in all fairness, would still be higher quality entertainment than the show we have now. Anyway, what's all this got to do with Neanderthals, you ask? Well, it just so happens, the male Neanderthals morphology makes it so that they would be able to outman the male Homo sapiens, both intrasexually and intersexually. Mm. For one, their thick bones and heavy joints suggest that they had way more muscle mass than humans of the day, putting them at a... I don't know that. I knew they were... I think they were shorter too, right? Um, and they, they do have some, some of their features, but they were, they were swole. Okay. So I think they're getting to here. And we need a bio... I need a bio... Is there a biology teacher reacts? A, bio, a biologist reacts channel? Um, that can confirm all this stuff <laughs> but okay so the prediction here is that they're going to say that they blend they blended in the men blended in so much the neanderthal men blended in so much with almost sapien women they blended almost completely that's what i'm, I'm following or do i have that backwards no. Huge advantage both in asserting dominance and in appearing attractive. Secondly, their facial features exaggerate all the characteristics that makes a face appear male in humans, with square, well-defined jaws and heavy brow lines, further increasing their appeal to human females. Broad shoulders, that's hot. Also, their large chest cavities and broad nasal passages would make it so that their vocalizations would be much louder than humans, adding still to their intimidation <laughs> factor. They were, they were louder, <laughs> more aggressive. Me want woman. So basically, when the male Neanderthals strut into a human village, they'd be guaranteed Casanova, ensuring that they would interbreed. But what about the Neanderthal females, you ask? If the men are more manly by default, surely the women would conversely be more man-ish. One would think that this homeliness would counteract the reproductive success of their male counterparts, but- That's mean. They're not homely. Look how well he drew her. But this is where that whole sexual asymmetry thing comes in. Because whereas the human females would be selective towards the Neanderthals, the males don't really care. They're going to take what they can get. Their women already waltzed off with those jabronis. They're lonely. What's a guy got to lose? So in the end, when a population of humans meets a population of Neanderthals, there'd actually be an increased chance of genetic admixture, thereby making extinction through interbreeding seem like a much more plausible outcome for the Neanderthals. If the Nobel Committee is watching, I'd like my prize yeah. sent to this address. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that was good. I, I'm very interested in what I call prehistory. Basically history before recorded writings, before sedentary civilizations. And uh, the whole interaction and, and early Homo sapien development um, is pretty fascinating to me. And I have a lot to learn from that because you're getting into other, you're getting into non-historical um, uh, areas there. You're getting into anthropology, archaeology, um, biology all those sorts of things which you know I'm, I'm very novice in um and uh but it's fascinating to me to see the development of of, of uh, homo sapiens and things like that and i've always been kind of perplexed by the whole neanderthal um and and kind of modern human uh early relationship of how they kind of overlap and i know there was a lot of mystery mystery about what happened to those uh what happened to neanderthals but yeah i know i had heard that there is definitely DNA traces you can you can you can see there um, uh, for that to happen. Usually, it, it seems like what researchers use, they come to these I think safer conclusions where it's like, hey, they aren't they didn't Neanderthals didn't they're not gone just because they completely interbred or because they just died out because of competition. The 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 safer thing you often see is it's both, right? It's both. Nature versus nurture, you heard that argument, how everything's a product of nature versus nurture, and usually some kind of blending of that. But where is the line, right? Which is the higher percentage of what happened to those people that they interbreed so um, so much that their descendants with each generation are getting closer and closer um, away from themselves, which is how it kind of, you know, the evolution works of that. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but to see, yeah, to see kind of how that's like, and I know there's a lot there. And it's, again, it's hard to, it's hard to do because it's mostly biological. We don't have a lot of historical evidence. This is where we have to get out of history because the historical, uh, the, the process of why which we learn through history 
doesn't really work in this case um, because the there it's prehistory. It's it's prehistory. So, and I know uh, anthropologists are uh, and and archaeologists are are very much trying to get into this, but I know the the evidence can be limited, and I'm way behind on any of this stuff. Um, I need to catch up on wh- what the science is saying about this. But it is it's kind of cool though because this is really where history begins like the history the the classical history that we study this is where like history begins so it is relevant i think to us as historians and history um minded people so anyway that was good though i like that he did this and it wasn't just some like crazy i mean it's comedic but not just some crazy just for the lulls uh type of hypothesis here a hypothesis here but actually something that can be rooted with some kind of evidence but of course you know being comedic about it and that's maybe that's one of the fun things about about sam is uh, is tying those those two elements together so all right anyways um you can tell me what you think you know about this again we're getting a little bit out of the realm of history but and, and more into other figures but the overlap is there and i think it's worth talking about um, we have a prehistory tab or channel in our uh, discord server that you can come in and give any ideas if this is something you've researched more uh, uh more um, as well so definitely come join us over there. All right, on the way out, um, uh, remember, go to the original video link. It's down below, so you can give Sam uh, Sam's video here a view, a like, sub, all that stuff. And then, you know, sure to sub if you haven't over here. Love to have you around our community. All right, with that, thanks for being here and being an part, active part of our history community here just in the larger sense of YouTube. Support all the history content providers out there. Promote history education. And just by watching these videos and get involved, you do have a part in that, and that's so great. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.